have you ever looked at a website and wondered how did they know where to get the data to show me this website? I've never really done that either. I don't really know who has. Anyways, there is a whole world of numbers out there that link websites to a server. There's actually, if you want to get technical, there's actually 3,706,452,999 publicly available IP addresses. Those numbers link you to different servers around the world. And what's crazy is we're actually starting to run out of those numbers. So they're working on a version of IP addresses that is called version six, which I'm going to put this number on the screen. I can't say it. If you know how to say it, write it in the comments below because this number is gigantic. Here it is on the screen. So no one in the world actually wants to remember a number to get to a website. Kind of like if I was say like, hey, to go to YouTube, instead of typing in youtube.com, you're going to type in 132.153.168.123. And you have to remember numbers for every single website. So instead what they do is they build up something called DNS which that is the way that you put in a name on a name server that links your website to an IP address. So all you have to do is remember that, hey, youtube.com will take me to this address rather than an IP address that you have to type in. So I'm gonna show you in this video how that works and why it's important for you to know this, especially if you're in a business trying to run and build websites, or even if you're in a business and you're just doing one website, you should probably know a little bit about this. So let's hop in and do that. All right, as we do jump in with this explanation, I do want to spend a second and just remind you, we are consultants. So if you're ever having a problem linking your website to its location so people can get to it, or you're having a problem with how your mail flow works, reach out to us at support at nexttechconsultants.com. We're also available on all social media platforms with the same handle at nexttechnt on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, you can find us there and reach out with any questions as well. So DNS stands for Domain Name Systems, which I did have to look that up because I actually thought it was called Domain Name Services, so I was wrong. And the first step to setting up DNS is actually buying a domain. And that's the first step, like ours, nexttechconsultants.com. That's a domain name we purchased. So now that we purchased our domain, what we need to do is we need to set up either custom name servers or we use the built-in ones that our domain registrar provides. So our domain registrar, what they do is they point your name servers to the right location. A name server is something that you set up all your DNS in. So you can have things like nexttechconsultants.com goes here. www.nexttechconsultants.com can actually go to a different place, but normally you set it up so it's the same. The other thing you can do is you need to set up MX records. And I'm gonna get in these records a little bit later, but what you do is you set up all of these records on a name server. I would recommend, unless you know what you're doing, just use the built-in ones with your domain registrar. Um, but if you need something with like great APIs or things to reach out so you don't have to update it manually and you can update it with a script, then what I would recommend is Amazon Web Services. They have a service called Route 53, which is actually really handy. Um, I built some pretty cool scripts with that. So if you're looking for something to tie in with scripting and APIs, I would recommend Route 53. But for most people, stick with the name servers that are with your domain registrar. And now that we have our name server set up, the world will know where to look for our domain name. So we're gonna go to our registrar. In my example, I'm gonna bring up GoDaddy and we're gonna see in the name server and then we're gonna start putting in DNS. So I'm gonna hop over the computer and I'm gonna show you different types of DNS you can put in. All right, so like I said, now we're in GoDaddy and I'm gonna show you different DNS settings. So I've clicked on my domain. I'm gonna go over here and click manage DNS. So once I get into DNS, you can see there's DNS records. There are the most common ones, which most people, if you are using a domain name for your business, you're gonna put in what's called an MX record. So you're gonna click add new record. MX, what that's used for is for a mail system. So a lot of times you're gonna link this back to like Google or Microsoft are kind of my two preferred ones. So it's gonna be at, which is your host domain. So this is saying mail for nexttechconsultants.com. If you put a word in here, this would be Josiah at test.nexttechconsultants.com. So you don't want to do that. You want to put an at some domain places you leave it blank. Priority is like what level of priority do I want this to be? So this is number one. And then whoever sets up your mail system will give you this value to put in. And then you're going to click save. So then finally, after MX records, what you're going to do is you're going to add a new record. 
and you're gonna use text records. And to set up email, I have videos over all of that. We have how to set up your email, how to set up SPF records, DKIM, and DMARC. And so those should be popping up, but you can see those are all linked in the description below if you need help with that. But a text record, what you're gonna do is you're gonna say at, and a lot of times what this is, you're gonna say V equals SPF, include spfprotectionoutlook.com. And that's your SPF record to allow Outlook to send emails on your behalf. Text record is basically a way for you to verify your domain or give information to people out there that says, hey, we're doing this certain thing with our domain. Then finally, most of the time for like websites, you're gonna set up an A record. And a lot of times for your host, your main root system like nexttechconsultants.com or nexttechlearning.com, it's gonna be an IP address. So you do have to know where to point it. I'm gonna put in a fake one, 156.25.14. And this is gonna be where traffic would flow if I put in an A record. An A record is for IPv4 addresses only. So if you notice, if I delete this, it gives you these Xs. That means you can only put in an IPv4 address for an A record. And that's what how you get like your value of your name server to go to a website so people can see the information of your website. Finally, we're gonna go down. I'm just gonna hit on this one briefly, but basically an AAAA record is an IPv6 address, which is a lot longer. But if you ever need to put that in, it's not an A record, it's the quad A's. And the last one we're gonna cover, I know there's more, there's like, there's a CAA, certificate authority, name servers we covered a little bit earlier, but those are all in there because you have to have name servers in order for it to work. So you can see they're here. Um, this is how the domain knows where to get the information. And then you have other ones like SRB, which if you ever need these, the people that need them to be put in will give you the value that you need. But another really cool one is like CNAME, which what this does is like www, and you can actually have that point to a lot of times a website will give you a record here. Like I, th I think mine is like WP engine.host.com, something like that, where you're pointing it to a name. If you have a choice between an A record and a C name record, I typically like a C name record because then the provider, if they need to change the IP address, do maintenance on a server or do anything like that, you don't have to worry about it. They can change the IP address and it doesn't affect you because they're giving you a C name record and that name is then pointed to the IP address. So they need to change it. They just change the IP address, point the name to a new one and it's done. So it's something that makes it a little bit easier for you to work with. And I would, if you're, if you have the option to do a C name, I would always choose that over an A record. All right, so guys, if you're just starting out with your domain, really just buy one from like GoDaddy or wherever you bought it from, set up your MX records for email so that way your email flows. Um, like I said, there's a link in the description below if you need help with getting your email to, to flow or work or whatever you need. And then, you can set up your A record and your C name records for your website. So that way people can see your website and you're good to go. Let me know if you do have any questions in the comment below or send us an email at support at nexttechconsultants.com. We're more than happy to help you out. And I hope this video helps you out in some way to understand DNS records a little bit better. So that way, if somebody's asking you questions to put in entries or do something, you at least know what they're asking and you can put them in. Again, we are consultants. This is a lot of fun. I enjoy making these videos. So if you do have any questions, put them in the comments below because I like answering them. Also make sure you like and subscribe to this channel because it really does help us create more content like this to help support your business. Thank you guys so much for coming around and I look forward to seeing you next time.